Hello and welcome everyone. In this video, I'm going to show you how to create and use custom sync types in fish networking. Custom sync types allow you to design or create containers that you can customize their synchronization behavior. Imagine, for example, if you have a sync list, which is a built-in fish networking type. Whenever you add or remove an item or update an item, you don't want to send the whole list across the network. You just want to send the changed items or item or the removed items, whatever. So this way you save bandwidth and performance at the same time. Custom sync types allow you to do this for any data type. And in fact, all the built-in collection types in fish networking are custom sync types. Okay, so in this video, I'm going to use a very simple example. We're going to have a simple type called sync health. That's going to have a base value and the value. And we're going to be synchronizing these across the network whenever they change. So let's get started. Uh, I have here a very basic Unity scene with a network manager, a player spawner component, and a hot script, and some spawn points to differentiate between the players. And inside my hot script, it's a pretty basic uh, heads up display for the network where I can start and stop servers and clients. Okay. So, and my player class is just an empty network behavior for now. Now, let's go inside of Unity and right click the scripts folder and create a new uh, script. Let's call it sync health. Now, let's remove all the default code here. Seal the class as, you, as usual. And we're going to change the inherited type from mono behavior to custom, oh, sorry, to sync base. And custom sync types require that you also inherit from the I custom sync, sorry, implement the I custom sync interface. Uh, we're going to get an error, but let's just ignore it for now. And let's remove all the default namespaces. Now, we're going to have some fields at first. The first one is called, sorry, it's going to be a private read only float called the natural page value. And we're going to explain what are those going to be used for. Private read only float, initial value. Now, after this, we're going to have a private float base value and a private float value. Uh, at the top here, I'm, I'm going to create a new constant. I'm going to say private const load epsilon is equal to 0.001 f. Okay. And down here, I'm going to create a constructor. So public sync health. I'm going to take two parameters, one called um, base value and another called value. Inside of this constructor, we need to initialize the initial base value to the base value we are given, and the initial value to the value we are given. Also for the fields, the other fields, we're going to take the base value and the base value and the value in the value. Okay, uh, I'm going to also need another field here. We're going to use for uh, differentiating between the different types of fields that have changed, or sorry, the different fields that have changed, but let's just ignore this for now, okay? Uh, I'm going to go here and remove this constant as well for now, it's not needed. I'm going to go down here and start creating my properties, which are going to expose the values inside the same type to the user or to the developer so he can mutate it as needed, okay? So we're going to have a public float base value going to return the base value and the setter is going to say if base value is equal to the value we are trying to assign we simply return this warning here is the reason i have the constant above it's telling us that float comparison is inaccurate which is true and you need to change it to like something of an approximate comparison so let's just keep it like this for now or to simplify things, we can simply use integers. So let's switch these types to ints now. So everything is a bit easier to tackle. Now we just compare if the base value is equal to the value, we simply return. Otherwise, we assign the base value 
the new value and we call a method that's in the base uh, sorry sync base type called dirty dirty tells the network that this sync type or this instance with the sync type has changed and requires synchronization okay now let's go down here and say public print value so get value and the same time uh, sorry same thing for the setter so the values of the value the return otherwise we'll sign the value and call the dirty method it's like a can type today okay now we have created our properties now there are some important methods we need to override in this uh sync base type the first one is called write delta what this write delta method does is it's automatically called by the network when there are changes done to the sync type okay so for example if a client has joined and kept playing for a while and then a value has changed inside the or a field has changed inside the sync type this method is called to synchronize the deltas or the changes okay just like that and the base implementation writes the header so you need to call this with the default with the provided parameters as well now we're going to go down here and for now we're just going to say writer dot write single and we give it the base value and writer dot write single as well for the value uh, this isn't the final implementation and i'm going to show how to optimize it later on okay now we overwrite the write for method which is here now we need to call the base method without resetting the same tech okay so let's click here oh sorry we need to call the write header method with the writer and set reset syntax to false. Now, after this, we go here and do the same thing as a write delta. So we write the base value and we write the value. So, okay. And both of these are identical for now but this will change later. Now we need to override the read method. The read method does the opposite of the write method, obviously. Um, you simply read the data from the provided reader. So let's override this read method right here. And the base uh, does nothing, so we don't need to call it. So we can just remove this. And what we're going to do is simply say int base value equals reader let's read int 32 uh, sorry oh yeah we have been using integers and 32 here and 32 here as well yeah so we read an n32 and read another n32 for the base value and the value now there is a check we need to do here you see this parameter called as server so this parameter indicates whether this this data is being read on the server or by a client okay so if the server is reading the data it's quite redundant to apply the changes because as you can see here in this setter or this property we have already changed the value on the server and like all sync types um, uh, custom sync types need to be changed on the server like sync bars and the uh, they cannot be changed on the client okay so it's redundant to do the changes so i'm going to go down here and define a boolean called discard changes and i'm going to set it to not as server so if we are not a server so if we're a client but at the same time we are the server so this is quite confusing but let me explain so here we are checking if the data is being read on a client okay that is the server so the host client the player that's hosting the game why are we going to do this because it's the changes have already been done and don't need to be reapplied this uh, otherwise it would cause duplicates okay uh, sorry duplicates holy crap my accent is very bad okay now let's go here and say if this card changes is true we simply return what you might say that reading the data here is redundant but it will give you errors if you do not read 
uh, all the data that's being sent from the server, okay? It's not an error, but a warning that will cause errors in the, in the long run, okay? So after this, if we are not to discard the changes, we are simply going to say base value equals the new base value and value equals the new value. Uh, there is another method we need to override called reset, which as the name implies, resets the values to their defaults. So we're going to say base value equals the initial base value and value equals initial value. This is the use for our two fields above. Now, there is an error we have here because the iCustomSync interface has a method called get serialized type. Now, let's go ahead and do it. Serialized type. So, what this method does is it's used by Fish Networking internally and tells it whether this type requires a custom serializer to be automatically generated or whether you will provide one or to simply ignore it. If you would like the serializer, uh, to ignore this type, you can simply return no. But if you would like to provide a serializer, in, ca in case you would like to send this whole container over the network, you can simply say return type of sync help. Okay, now this will result in some errors, so we need to create our own serializer down here. Let's go ahead and say public static class sync health, health serializer. And we're going to have two methods. The first one is called um, write sync health. And it's an extension method, so we need to prefix the first parameter with this writer writer and give it a sync health instance. So sync health. And I'm simply going to say writer dot write uh ooh, write and fetch two given the Sync health health base value and writer the write in 32 sync, sync health dot value. Now we go and do the write method so public static sync health and read sync health this reader reader and we simply say int base value equals reader that read and 32 and and value equals reader dot read and 32 and we return a new sync health instance with the base value and the value so that's pretty much it for our serializer and this is the basic implementation of our custom sync type now to use it let's go inside our player class and add field so public, so private, read only, sync health, and we're going to call it health. And we must initialize it here, given the one, uh, two values, 100 and 100. And you need to decorate all custom sync types with the sync object attribute, okay? As documented in Fish Networking, it's documentation, the sync object here. And we are using a modern version of C Sharp, so we don't need to specify the type here. Now, how do you change this value? If you simply go ahead inside the update method and say health plus equal, sorry, base value for instance plus equal 100, this won't work because first it will cause you errors because you're trying to change a sync type on the client which is not supported or not really not supported but not allowed for security reasons. And because there is no way to synchronize this change even if you somehow implemented it, there is no way to synchronize this change right now. So how do we implement this change? Now, let's go here and write two RPCs. So two server RPCs, which are RPCs sent by the client to the server to execute some code or to do something, okay? Uh, private, void, server, set base, or not, not set, let's change it to add. So server add base health, which takes an integer with the base, so with an amount, and we simply say health dot base value is equal to the amount. And another one for the values, so private void server add 
health and and amount we say health value must equal the amount now these rbcs will allow us to change the sync object on the server and they will be automatically serialized back to the client because they are they have been marked as dirty inside the properties as you can see here let's go back to the layer and we need to somehow like some way to visualize this so i'm going to simply use the on gui method provided by unity i'm going to say if we are not the owner the owners of this object we simply return otherwise we draw a gui uh, layout with label um let's say health so the base value equals false health the base value member value equals health dot value okay now let's go inside our update method so update and we're going to do the same check if we're not the owners of this object we simply return otherwise you say if keyboard dot um digit sorry the current digit one key dot was press this frame if we press the alpha one or the digit one key on our keyboard this frame we say server and base health let's say 10 points and f keyboard dot current dot digit one sorry digit two key that was pressed this way you say server add health and get it 10 points as well now there is an error here you know we just need to add this here uh, now we need to because we are drawing the GUI buttons for or the GUI buttons for the server UI or in, inside this hot script here we need to offset this a little bit so there was a GUI layout utility method dot get rect yeah I'm going to give it a width of say uh, 100 and a height of let's see you know what it doesn't matter let's just hit it like that we're going to see it um I think that's it for this class now let's remove this unused name place and go back into unity wait for it to compile and let's go ahead and run our game click on host and as you can probably see the health has a base value and a value now if you press one we increment the base value if we press two we increment the value now let's go ahead and do a quick build but first let's offset this um thank you yeah geo layout utility dot get wrecked <laughs> yeah the width is going to be say 100 let's just go screen the width and the height is going to be 300 float just a random number or to be more precise let's just say screen dot height times 0.25 f now it's a little bit more it's going to be more visible at least let's see host yeah so as you can see our values are changing as intended now let's go ahead and do a quick build It's going to take a minute, I think. Okay. Let's go and run our game inside the editor. Let's host here and go into the client and join. So as you can see, this is our client and we're going to press one. And as you can see, the values are changing and being synchronized back to the, to the client. And on the server, the same thing happens. Okay, this is all well. Now, this sync type here is not the best when it comes to delta writing. Why this? Because we're simply just sending the whole structure to the client whenever it like there's a change. Now, we would like to just send only the changes that happen to the fields, okay? So for example, if I change the base value, I would like the base value only to be synchronized, not both the base value and the value. There are many ways to do this. You can use an enum to send it across the network as a byte and read it, which is the easiest way, I think. 
you can send booleans and indicate whether certain values have changed or not but i prefer to simply use a bit field uh, sorry a bit mask uh, field called dirty flags and i'm going to show you how to do this it's pretty simple it involves some bit operations but all are pretty simple now i'm going to define a private byte and call it dirty flags i'm going to set it to 0b which is the this is indicates a binary literal a byte has eight bits so here is it this is redundant it equals zero but i would like just to show you how this is represented okay and now we're going to say that if the first bit here is set then the base value has changed and if the second bit has changed then the value has changed as well now let's go here inside our base value setter and we're going to say that dirty flags we're going to do a bitwise or operation on its bits and i'm going to say set the rightmost bit to one okay and here i'm going to say set the second bit from the right to one okay and inside my right delta method here i'm going to do a little change now, instead of just writing both of the values, I'm going to go ahead and write, first of all, write the dirty flags, which is just a single byte, which shouldn't be really that concerning. Then I'm going to go here and say, if, do a bitwise and operation here. So I'm going to say, if dirty flags and is not equal to zero basically then we have changed the first bet which means our base value has changed so we say writer we we'll write in 32 base value okay uh now the same thing we're going to do that for the value so if we say dirty flags and zero not equal to that I suggest you use constants for these because they're going to be much easier to write. Let's write n32 value. Now, this is all we need to write here. But let's go in our write full method, uh, sorry, write full method here. And I'm going to say writer dot write byte. I'm going to say that assume that uh, both of the fields have changed, okay? 0, 0, 1, 1. So this indicates that both of our fields have changed since this is a full write, and we're going to read them both, both, okay? Now, inside our read method here, we're going to do some changes. The first one is going to be us reading the, the dirty flags. So dirty flags equals to reader.read byte. And we're going to define two booleans, okay? And we're going to say bool has, or just, we don't really need to define two booleans. Let's just go down here and say that basically copy and paste this. So copy this value, this expression, sorry. And we're going to say if this is true, then read it in 32. Otherwise, assign it the value zero. Okay, now where is the issue here? Yeah, this extra parenthesis. Now, same for the value. We're just going to copy this. Put it down here. Change the bit to be like that. And we go down here. Now, if we discard the changes, uh, sorry, keep the discard changes boolean and check. If we discard it, then just return because we don't need the values. Otherwise, we just assign the base value and the value. Now, the dirty flags here, um, what? Let's use the freaking IDE. Hmm. Oh, yeah, sorry. We need to change this to be like that. Now, this is pretty much it for our read method. Now, let's go down here and make sure to reset our dirty flags to be like this and go all the way up. In our write delta method, after writing the changes, we need to go down here and ensure that our dirty flags are reset. Okay, so we say it is zero. Okay, and 
that's pretty much it for our write delta, write full, and read methods. Now, let me again clarify what both of these methods do. Now, assume that you have just connected to the game and you have the client, like we have an instance of the sync health uh, sync type. Now, the client, when it initially connects, it receives a full write from the server, including all the data that needs to be assigned to the fields. But over time, when changes happen, like we have here, we send only these changes. So you keep that in mind. This method, I think, so far is called once. Or at least when we have to send all the data to a new client. Okay? So keep that in mind. Now, let's go here and check our code, which is all well. We don't need to change the serializer here, but need to send the dirty flags because they are necessary in this case. And that's pretty much it. Now let's save and go to our um, property here. Let's go and add a debug log just to show us that the values have changed. So log here and say base Name of base value has changed. And let's go to the value here and say name of value has changed. Okay. Now let's go inside of Unity here. Let's enter play mode. And let's host again. Now check our console just for any logs or warnings. I think so far, let's try changing the base value. As you can see, it logs that the base value has changed. And here we see that our values are only synchronizing what has changed. Okay. This might not be really what's correct. So let's go ahead and remove the logs from here. And let's go and add them. Oh, sorry, let's go all the way up and move them from here as well. So we just add them here where we are, when we are writing the changes. So the base value has changed. Now the value has changed. Okay. Now let's go inside of Unity again. Enter play mode. Host the game. And clear the data. Now when I'm going to press 1, you see that the base value is the only one that has changed. And when I press 2, or repeatedly both of the values, clicking 1 and 2, see that they are changing. Very well. Now let's go to our client. Sorry, let's go and do a quick build. Let's enter play mode in the editor as the client starts. Let's host here. Let's increase the values a little bit. So let's make it 160, 140, working fine. Now let's go to the client and join here. Okay, now I'm going to enable logging for the player build. And I'm going to press 1 to increment my values. Oh, interesting. Uh, this is a logic error on my end because you can see the values override each other. Yeah, let's go and fix this real. Wow. Oh, interesting. Unity just crashed. Okay. <laughs> interesting. Uh, let's go here in the write method and now remove the logs. We don't need them. Let's go down here in the read method and let's add two booleans just to simplify things. Has base value changed equals to this. Just remove that. Base value changed, and here we do the same thing, but just copy it first and say bool has value changed. Just set to this like that, and add that here. So has value changed. Now down here as well, let's do the same thing. So has base value changed? Take the base value. It has base value changed, which I'll just say base value equals to the new base value. And here, if 
the value has changed we'll assign the value the new value we have been given now let's go inside unity let's enter play mode just to confirm that we're working okay yep let's do a quick build enter play mode here click host now let's join here and now when i change my values you can see they are updating correctly and when i change both of them they do not override each other uh that's pretty much it for our custom sync type and um yep the beauty of custom sync types is now is that they allow you to do literally anything and control its synchronization behavior as mentioned at the start of this video so this example here is a very simple one you can have much more interesting and complex data types that you would like to synchronize across the network and usually when you are trying to synchronize big data containers for example as mentioned uh, lists dictionaries or even like item types if your game has items or skin data if your game has skins and stuff like this you don't want to use a sync var because a sync var just sends the whole thing repeatedly across the network whenever it changes which is still okay but if you'd like more fine-grained control like you see here you should or you must use custom sync types okay so yeah that's pretty much it for this video i hope you have enjoyed it if you have any questions leave them in my video comments down below and consider supporting me on ko-fi uh like the video and subscribe if you enjoyed it and see you in the next one goodbye